with this group who will introduce themselves. Uh, Thank you for coming. So uh, yeah, we're, we're digital creator. Uh, my name's Steve. I'm Katie. I'm Brittany. I'm Lane. I'm Tyler. And I'm Nathan. Um, so yeah, we run six digital creator spaces uh, throughout Northern Ontario. Um, have you guys heard of digital creator before? Yeah. What? Wow. <laughs> Did anybody attend Holly's session this morning? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Start at zero. Right. Start at zero. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So why don't we go through like where we work and then we'll kind of talk about it. And as we're getting into it, essentially our thing, guys, is that we uh, do both structured and unstructured media arts programming um, for teenagers. And our, our target demographic, what we like to see is ages 14 to 19, but we've also got periphery ages, so we'll do 11 to 13 sometimes, and now and then we'll let some of the folks in as well. Um, yeah, so we tend to focus on, you know, cameras and photography and graphic design, but not limited to those things. Just a little, you know. What are the ages again? 14 to 19. And, you know, lots of structured programming, like you said, so we'll, we'll run actual programming workshops, everything from photography, video, visual design, illustration, but also just kind of a space to hang out, chill with your friends, play video games, kind of whatever. Uh, it's about creation, but it's also just about having an environment that you can come and hang out in. And as we proceed, all of it is free, by the way. This is not like a cell. It's a yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We're all in like low barrier spaces, so we're in like libraries and museums and community centers, um, places you can go and not have to pay. Yeah. So, right. so, so I run the Temiskaming Shores uh, space area that we're in right now. Even though Cobalt's not really Temiskaming Shores. Uh, Haleybury and New Blizzard and Diamond, but we have two spaces, one in Haleybury, one in New Blizzard. Um, those are all the areas there. Yeah, I'm, I'm in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, our site is on the border of the U.S. Oh, that's not where. <laughs> yeah, right there. Yeah. Um, so Elliot Lake is our close by neighbor. Um, Sault Ste. Marie is the biggest site. So we have about 75,000 people living in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, which is it's still a pretty small town, a northern town, I guess, relative to where some of you guys are from. But. I'm in the Elliott Lake location. Uh, we're in a community center that is an, an art, artist hub, so the arts uh, the arts and culture people kind of live there unofficially. Uh, the museum is there, the gallery is there, um, so it's a good ideal arts place. I'm in Sioux Lookout, so that's Sioux Lookout right there, um, just off Highway 17. Um, we're it's a small, small community. It's a First Nations community, majorly. Um, there's two high schools. There's, are we getting into that later? Didn't uh, we'll get into the fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Here's where Silicon is. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, again, so I'm Tyler, and I am the program lead for Timmons. Um, so I have a space in which is right here. Thank you very much, Lane. Um, I spent my time evenly. Um, I do my structured programming in the Timmins Public Library. Has anybody been to Timmins? Yeah, so they got this beautiful, beautiful library, right, um, with all those public rooms. So we do our structured stuff, like Nathaniel was saying, photography, filmmaking workshops, and what have you, over there. And then our kind of drop-in space, our sort of free-for-all space, is in the Timmins Museum. And that's uh, obviously the Kenora. So <laughs> I'm way, it's basically the last major town before you reach the Manitoba border. Um, Quite far, as you can see, I drove here this weekend. Took about yeah, there you go. Um, so you know, still Ontario technically, yeah. although a lot of people there are not sure yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the Temiskaming Shores space. This is pictures from the new Liskert space. Um, that's the main area that we operate out of, uh, mainly because it's the one closest to the high school, the main high school in Timiskaming Shores. Um, we have a picture of Main Street on there. Um, I'm actually from Ottawa, so I was a bit of an outsider coming into uh, New Liskard. Uh, one of the pros being an outsider, 
Um, I, would, I would say just having like a fresh face to the teams, like I don't recognize me or anything. I don't know. So that kind of helped, I would think. Uh, fun fact about Twisting Shores that I've found out is one of the Hardy Boys writers is from here. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, and these are some photos from uh, my space. Um, so this in the background with the twinkle lights, which I feel are imperative, um, <laughs> is uh, the, the museum. So we've got people hanging out in the museum and stuff. This is our robot, um, which I thought was a nice touch, so it moves and stuff. Um, and then here's a shot of two of our teams working on stuff in the Timmins Public Library. But we'll talk more about space in a moment. Uh, some fun facts about Timmins is uh, because it's so like rich with Gold, like mining is huge there. Um, but outside of that, Shania Twain comes from Timmins. <laughs> I'm kind of proud of whatever. You know? <laughs> yeah, so that's. My no way, oh, man. Cool. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, either way, be proud. That's great. <laughs> okay, yeah. This is my space in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, we're kind of unique in that we don't have a room. The library in Sault Ste. Marie beautiful, huge open concept space with like huge beautiful windows which any artist would like love to be in front of all day. Um, but we have this like brick wall here with a couple shelves um, and like a brick wall over there with like yeah a fire extinguisher <laughs> and that's all that really like besides we have cool furniture. Um, that's all that really lets you know that our space is like specific to teams only which presents um, it's a positive thing in that we're right out in the open so teams can see us, we're highly visible, but it's also really challenging because um, formerly the library wasn't necessarily a teen hub and it was like hard to let people know that that needed to be reserved for young people. So, yeah. Um, so I'm in the community media room in the library. I have a really nice uh, space in there. The community media room was the first place in Sulaco you could get internet in 1994. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't think it would catch on. They thought it was a fad. But you would go on uh, the computers in here and you would surf the web. <laughs> and uh, we house the servers for Keynet, which uh, provides internet to the north, the far north. So we have like crazy Wi-Fi and like basically unlimited bandwidth. Our, our former uh, head librarian made that uh, deal with Keynet and it's been awesome. Um, yeah, here's my space, a lot of teamwork, all kinds of like um, wall art, some washi tape art, posted art, um, and this is kind of like a regular, what a regular night looks like. Um, <coughs> Oh, here's another fun fact about Sulaco. I've been telling people this because I just found it out. So in the 1950s, the Sioux Hudson Airport was the second busiest airport in North America. Yeah, Sioux Hudson and Chicago O'Hare. Not as far as like people moving, but as far as like flights go. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is my LA Lake space. Uh, there's like a photo backdrop. It's like a bed sheet I brought in from home, and the kids love it. It's great. So I have like a photo studio. I have my like table set up. Uh, I run Dungeons and Dragons in the space, which is so much fun. <laughs> a little stressful. So much fun though, and and like it's just a very like open space. It's a big room with window like gigantic windows, and it's it's uh, it's just like a place people hang out. So Kenora, um, this is Kenora. Uh, the Kenora Library is actually around here, but I mostly run out the Kuwait Library. So it's a small neighboring community. Um, and when I got there, I thought I would paint the whole space and make it nice and pretty. Um, this is Husky. That's the our quintessential roadside attraction that I've seen a lot of them on the way here. I think the Muskie beats a lot of them, honestly. Um, yeah, just oh, so just a nice small space. Uh, it gets pretty packed once there's some people coming in, but we make do, and that's that. Lots of boat country up there. <laughs> so 
So for maintaining a strong team, we all we didn't never met each other. We just got hired over Skype. So we even at headquarters, we never really met the bosses in North Bay. We just kind of moved to our cities and stuff. We like only saw each other on Skype. Um, and then we had like an initial meeting in Chicago because the program is based off a program in Chicago called U Media, where um, it's like pretty similar to Digital Creator, where they have like uh, like media arts and like hangout space in the libraries there. So I think it was like last May we all went and spent like a week living side by side with each other in Chicago where they got to know each other. Yeah, the real world. Yeah, yeah. 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 Does anybody know Chance the Rapper by chance? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so he actually got his I don't know, I want to say start, but he attended the U Media space. He recorded Chicago. his yeah. first mixtape at Girl Washington. Yeah. 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 He's like constantly donating money there now. <laughs> A year ago or something like that. The point of the lesson is if you come into the digital creator space, you might become a famous rapper yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing for maintaining a store, we don't, um, we don't have like a clip or anything like that, um, but we're in constant communication over something called Basecamp. Has anybody heard of Basecamp? Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's essentially cool. like a, a Slack or a Trello, basically. Um, and because we're all so like scattered, it keeps us together like all the time, you know, because you know, teams want to do crazy stuff. Like I remember when I moved there, having never used a green screen before, it was like, well, how do you do? How do you do green screen stuff? And it's like, oh yeah, I'm the guy. <laughs> like figure that out. Yeah. Uh, it really helps because we all have like an eclectic range of expertise, right? To be like constantly in communication. So it kind of worked out really cool. Like none of us really do the same thing. Like we all have pretty diverse practice. So base camp is kind of like, um, someone wants to do this. How to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. So we would, you know, although we're all in our own individual spaces, which are nuanced and different and stuff like that, we're always trying to support the other spaces. So should I show the tutorial? Yeah, so yeah, we sort of fill in the gaps a little bit by like making tutorials. So like, I don't know anything about graphic design, so I'll ask Lane to make a tutorial. Or Tyler has a TV background, so he actually made this three-point lighting tutorial that we're about to watch. And the film teacher at the high school in Silicon shows this now in his class. Just super. Yeah. <laughs> Can everyone? We might have to turn it off. Oh yeah. Do we have a volume? It's on the PC. camera, of course, and you're going to need a subject. The key light is going to be the first light that we place, and it's traditionally going to be the brightest, most powerful source of light, and usually it's going to go on the front, left, or right side of our subject. Now, because the key light can be so powerful, it will cast really strong shadows. So to support those shadows on the opposite side of the subject, we're going to introduce the fill light. So, so far the flower is already looking so much better than before. Uh, we have the key light giving it its power and initial light. We have the fill light supporting that key light. But what we need to do now is to separate our subject from the background. And to do that, we're going to use a backlight to give it a definition. So watch the stem, and you'll see a little gold <coughs> arrow on the stem, and that is uh, the backlight at work. Three-point lighting is super easy because you know that your backlight is going to go in the back. So the only question you have to ask yourself when lighting a subject, whether it's flowers, whether it's a person in your dramatic or comedic scenes, is which side do I want my key light in the front and which side do I want my fill in the front. So there we go. Just to recap, we have a key light, which is our most powerful light. We have a fill light, which is supporting our key light. And we have a backlight, which is defining our subject. And there you go, that was three point lighting in under three minutes. <laughs> right. Yeah. I guess I just wanted to mention also on the note of like maintaining a strong team is that um, we are like the only one in each of our community. Like I'm the only digital creator person in Sault Ste. Marie, aside from my on-site uh, supervisor who has like a million things to do. 
Um, so like being able to stay connected and support each other this way is um, really important. Like feeling that we have that support when we are isolated like this, but then also a way of like sharing resources because we are, most of us are arts organizations working with limited resources. So this is a way of um, kind of expanding on that without having to you know pay for extra training when we can kind of do that for each other. I think we were all like struggling at one point with like how to tackle some of our teens who um, tackle some of our teens, but like tackle some of our teens. <laughs> <laughs> um, tackle some of the things that our teens are dealing with, like gender issues in small communities in the north. So um, we put together a gender diversity training, and we got it from like uh, this amazing company in California. Uh, we contacted them and we were like, hey, this is what we do, can we like work with each other? And it was like hugely supportive for everyone, but organizing that kind of thing because like there's a recognized need for every single person on the team that they might not have access to in their community. And we don't have like backgrounds in yeah, like no backgrounds social in work or... You have, do you have education I don't know. Not, yeah, not really, really not like not a formal communication <laughs> background, so you have to lean on each other a lot. It's also been really great to get together at things like this, uh, different conferences, symposiums, um, where we can actually see each other face to face <laughs> and connect and be friendly with one another. Uh, or, you know, just even over Facebook chat, you being a little uh, less professional than on Facebook. Maybe, a little more less, yeah, less formal at least. Yeah. Same professionalism always. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, you know, liking one another yes. else. Yeah. Yeah. Basecamp yeah. keeps us more accountable because Holly can read that. Yeah. <laughs> so when you say we're going to do something on Basecamp. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we're going to talk about... Yeah, we, we want a picture of our no. program coordinator, yeah. person is definitely huge and like just keeping us focused on the program also. Especially during like, those first couple months when like nobody's coming to your space and like, you're trying so hard to feel come to your space yeah. and nobody's coming. Yeah. And she just really like motivate us to like, keep going forward and remember why we're she really knows how to pump your tires that way. Yeah, yeah. 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 like a personal cheerleader. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so if we have questions, can we ask or do you want to wait? We should that way. Yeah. Yeah. Participatory culture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Were you hired all at the same time, and how long have you been doing it? Uh, so we were the yeah. first two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We started like late February last year, so just like about a year and one quarter. I started May 1st of last year. Yeah, May and around the same time. Yeah. And I uh, was in April, so just in between those four. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I was pretty late. I started, um, like I moved to San Ines from North Bay in December, and then my space opened at the end of January of this year, so we're still, yeah, still pretty fresh. I wondered if you were all started at the same time because of the Chicago thing. So was the Chicago thing for everybody? Everybody, but yes. separate time. <laughs> <laughs> We were joking that you didn't get to try the deep dish pizza. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's too bad. <laughs> and then is the program still expanding? So if there's people in the room who are from other places that, like, what what is north? And, yeah. and, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, is there space for more? I think that's a good question. You paint the north with such a broad brush. It's huge. But are you, I'm sorry, I'm missing Are you, who is, who's your grant from? So many people. <laughs> <laughs> so mostly, mostly Trillium. Okay. And uh, NOHFC covered our, covered us. Yeah. Yeah. So in a lot of places, north is north, north and north bay, right? That's, right. Uh, so north is often north and yes, north Yes, I think yeah. like uh, jurisdiction-wise, consider anything north of Fort Falls. Mm -hmm. Yep, including Perry Sound and Manitoba. Yeah. 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 And so you, are there two supervisors? Well, there's, we have, Holly. Mm -hmm. We have Alexander, our new coordinator. Yes. Each site has an on-site supervisor, so someone that makes sure that we are showing up to work. <laughs> like a, like a, li a librarian or a direct, like an on-site yeah, director. And is it, a, and I'm sorry, I was like, is it a three-year grant? Yes. Yep. Yep. Is that great? And you're year one. So it's here? One and a bit. Just a year and a three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The first year was planning yeah, right. set up. before we got yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't remember if there's anything else you want to speak to here. I think 
Yeah. 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 So reaching out to teens, um, definitely high school is number one. Just reach out to the high school, talk to the principal, see so if you can get some class presentations. Personally, in terms of make sure, as I found doing the class presentations, like okay, uh, the most successful thing that I found was like. Um, going to designated groups and trying to like gear like a workshop towards them. Um, one of the more far out one was uh, <coughs> do like a first aid course where we use a 3D printer to like print a trachea and then the students could practice like puncturing holes in the trachea for first aid. Cool. That's cool. I didn't cool. Did that. <laughs> <laughs> And so that, so that group got pretty involved, and then the LGBTQ group also got very involved because not only is it a media art space, it's also a safe space. So when they found out, that's like the group that comes in pretty much every day. Yeah, I, I personally struggled getting into the schools, and access was always a bit of an issue because we were in a neighboring community. Uh, obviously, lots of teenagers wanted their own vehicles. So what I found was very useful for me similar to what Steve said, is branching out and, and embracing other organizations that may already have team participants, whether it's uh, LGBTQ groups, uh, attendance centers. Um, I've even went to some sports clubs and just just to get the word out there, even if we're not hosting a program that, that day. It's just useful if access is an issue, rather than trying to continuously convince them to come to you, just go to them and seem to work well. Um, one of the high schools in Sulacout called Pelican Falls First Nation High School, they have designated extracurricular days. So we to get involved with those and uh, do workshops. They're about 20 minutes away from, uh, from Sulacout. Um, so yeah, being mobile, being willing to move around, being able to schlep a lot of gear is uh, a good skill I found. <laughs> and yeah, school visits, that really helped. I find it particularly useful to reach out to specific teachers about like how our programming would benefit what they were trying to teach. So um, going into, I went into a careers class and instead of talking about like this is how you make a resume, I was like how does your resume look, look at these like different shapes you can make with your resume and I made it into like a design challenge. So they had a lot of fun with it, they did like drawing and they got to like figure out how to design a resume in a way that was like cool and interesting instead of like, how do I fashion these words so that someone will hire me? <laughs> yeah, it was it was like a different approach that I think that they maybe wouldn't otherwise get. So. I mean, obviously social media is always a big part of outreach. Um, traditional media too, radio, newspaper. Uh, Good old fashioned posters. Sure, right. Uh, I love the posters. <laughs> yeah. I find like also like meeting them where they're at, like, each of our communities, there seems to be like different teen interests that really um, are really strong. Or um, like in my community, we had we were lucky enough to get um, some workshops in from Lyft in Toronto. Um, and for <coughs> some reason, in my community, like all the kids wanted to go to this Lyft workshop. So that was like a really great clue. Like oh, you're into filmmaking. So then we struck up a partnership with Shaw TV, and there's this cool guy, Christian, and a lot of teen males are coming out to my space, and he, I feel like a lot of them really identify with him. He's like a skateboarder, and a filmmaker, <laughs> and a musician, and so that partnership really helped me um, get more regular teens into the space, and figure out what they were actually interested in, right, because that's the point, so. Um, finding an entryway to, like, like um, we talked about this, like, in the morning workshop that Lane and I went to, is finding an entryway from like what they're currently interested in to like an arts program. So uh, sometimes my entryway is cosplay, um, which is something that some of my teens are interested in, where you dress up as like a character that you really like, um, usually an anime. And uh, some of my teens are really into Dungeons and Dragons, and I use it to like introduce them to 3D modeling. And it's very weird, but they work. Um, so to speak to the sort of safe space aspect of it, something that I've experienced a little bit of is um, we'll have teens in, in the area that um, don't necessarily have the resources that you know everybody does at home. Um, something that has happened recently is like in our 
space, you know, we've got an Xbox and we've got a TV and there's enough for like four people to play, which is like really cool and kind of something that I like I take for granted. It's cool. I grew up with gaming systems, I grew up with computers. And there's a team who comes out in space pretty frequently who like doesn't have or he moves a lot. And I think that it's he had a PlayStation and they lost the cable, family can't get a new cable, you know, so comes to the space to sort of, you know, get his technology fixed because it's sort of, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, a lot of my teens don't have, they don't have reliable internet at home. You know, other things, too, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, putting yourself out there in those ways, or, or being, you know, I find help for me personally at our space, um, being kind of flexible helps. You know, like, um, yeah, yeah, being flexible helps. Mm -hmm. Being like, like instead of being able to haul gear or go where the teens are is, is great. Do as much outreach as possible. You talked about going to where they are if they're not going to the center. Are there other things uh, transportation-wise that you've done in order to help with issues of people being rural and not being able to get there, the vehicle? I think for the most part, we've all investigated into different bus options and stuff like that. Um, I don't know the experience with everybody else in their communities, but it's been a tough sell for ours. We're kind of working on something in Elliott Lake. It's in the works, I've been told. Uh, where maybe the high school bus will drop, like make a stop at my space on the way home, which is good. It obviously leaves other barriers like who's picking them up, but it, it's a start. That's something that I, yeah, in the winter time, well, I'm walking distance from the high school, which is really good, well, from Queen Elizabeth High School. Um, but in the middle of the winter, it's like 40 below, and they're walking home, and I feel real bad. Like, it, and, Public transit in Sulaco just doesn't exist. Um, yeah, I'm sure, something to. I'm okay. sure those of you who live in rural communities can mm -hmm. relate to yeah. non reliable public transit. So if that's not an option, um, it's about finding, again, being flexible and trying to figure out ways around that. So some of these groups that I've been collaborating with, they have their own transportation and they'll pick people up directly from the high school and bring them to the space. So that's worked out great. Mm -hmm. Like we can run programming at lunch hours or after school too, like in the spaces that we already are. Mm -hmm. I think we kind of covered this. Yeah. A little bit. A yeah. little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is my crazy core <laughs> board. Um, I put up a lot of team work. Whenever and. They draw pictures of me, and I just love it. Um, <laughs> nailed it. Uh, yeah, when they create something in the space, I would just put it out. So yeah. the room's a big refrigerator. Yeah. Um, that's a little picture of a free store. So that was a new idea that we got at one of the spaces in Chicago. Um, and the idea is just like put things that you don't need or want in there, and people can like do the same. So books and clothes and water bottles um, seem to go pretty fast. Fake mustaches also. <laughs> <laughs> I think a big part of making a team friendly environment isn't necessarily just with the, the physical decorations, but actually it's more of an attitude and an atmosphere that you're trying to create too. You want it to be welcoming, you want it to be comfortable, and you want to kind of read your crowd a little bit. Some people might be super chatty when they come in. A week later, they might come in and just want to zone on the computer. Who knows how their day was, right? You can ask them if they don't want to talk, let them do their thing. Just feel your crowd. I think the Media Lab did a pretty good job making it team friendly also. Just like the, the um, like sofas and carpets that they chose were really like on a team friendly uh, colors. And also like putting a video game system in there, which was like pretty controversial when I first got there. I actually got some moms coming in being like, he's not playing video games here. Uh, and stuff like that. And I actually ended up bringing like my old N64, which they really like. But yeah, just like having video game systems, just get them through the door. And uh, like we asked the new media, that was one of my first questions. What am I supposed to say to these parents that don't want their kids playing video games? And they were saying, well, if kids are playing with like other people, it's actually beneficial for them. And like you're getting them through the door, maybe later on they'll come and start doing media arts workshops. Mm -hmm. That is actually really true about uh, team friendly environment because I think that for a whole lot of us like the goal I mean at least for me the goal is like I love when teens when they come in to hang out and use the space to hang out but I also really like to see when somebody who doesn't 
consider themselves an artist, like a month later is like, I'm a filmmaker now, yeah. you know, or like, you know, I'm a graphic designer, you know, whatever. And um, <laughs> so it's really cool sometimes how when just having that stuff in their peripherals, having the camera set up, having the lights set up, or uh, something that person had recommended, which I took to heart, is if it's a hangout space, and that's totally cool, and we totally accept that, to just start working on something that could potentially be collaborated on. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I'm no stranger to doing little stop motion experiments, little claymation, and it's like, kids playing Rocket League in the corner, it's only so long before you see the lights and stuff, and it's like, what is going on? Yeah. And then you let the kid take over, it's great. The team, sorry. <laughs> Another challenge that I actually face too is like we're in a library. No team really, a lot of teams don't really want to go to a library. So that's like one of the things you got to say in your pitch when you go to the high school. Is like we're a part of the library, we're not really a part of the library. You know, like, we get, like we're allowed to eat food in the library, like in our section, which is like amazing. Because everyone else has to put their coffees down, the kids come up with their slurpees, come straight to the distributor space. And they can be loud, they can play music. So having that's really huge too. Our library changed that rule too, and it made a huge difference. Yeah, being able to bring a coffee and yeah. being able to bring yeah. you know their smoothie or whatever, it just is huge. It opened yeah. it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry if I missed this at the beginning, um, but you mentioned that you didn't necessarily come from education backgrounds. Uh, are the majority of you from artistic backgrounds, yes. or can you speak to that? For a second? Yeah, I went. I went to Canada College and took television, video broadcasting, and cinematography. Um, so Canada is in North Bay. Um, I heard about the media lab like a whole bunch of times. They do this thing called the Ice Follies. It's like an outdoor race a bit. So I volunteer with them there, kind of do about them a little bit. And then I just heard about this position just over at Facebook. My background's in visual arts, so um, yeah, I've been working with the North and in Windsor. Um, it's pretty, pretty interdisciplinary, but also very experimental, which can be intimidating when I have co workers with such like skilled, not specific. <laughs> Skill sets. Yeah. Um, I took uh, the textiles program, uh, the BCAD and textiles program at the Harvard College of Art Design, and then I went to museum management, uh, and I was interested in like making arts accessible. So, <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really good. Um, I'm a graphic designer and an illustrator, and before I was at Digital Creator, I was working in advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm a filmmaker to this day and a video artist, uh, media artist and all that jazz. Um, I went to school with Steve, which was a blast, I can tell you. Um, so where Steve did TV and then film, I just did the film program at Canada College, which was great and I recommend it. Um, and while studying, I started to take industrial film jobs. Nothing that anybody's heard of, I promise, but uh, <laughs> stuff like Hallmark or Harlequin stuff. I was the guy on the camera truck who's plugging data and stuff for 14 hours a day. Um, so when positions came along through the Media Lab to come to places like New Liskert uh, to work with Drew, who's filming stuff all over the you know, symposium, um, teaching stop motion and film to youngsters, just like a blast. And it didn't take very long doing that to be like, I wish that was like a full-time job. And of course you're like, but that'll never happen. This is just something I do two weeks out of the year, whatever, I'm cool with that. And then it wasn't so long, right after graduating, I did one last show, and then um, the, the opportunity came along to work in Tim, and I took it. Yeah, and I have a visual arts background and media arts background, um, but I also spend a lot of time running workshops, not just with uh, teens, but all ages, so I really just like spreading knowledge and getting inspired by the things that people create too because no matter how experienced you are in something, somebody else is always going to do it differently and that can change your perspective, so it's great to see that every day. Huh? Yes, I just wanted to say yes in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I like your question because um, it, the decision that we made in early on with the Joe Crater was simply to hire artists and people who worked in various arts backgrounds because they have a role of mentor. And also I think the creativity, the creativity of the leads, I think is really important to the energy of the space. So it was kind of a strategic choice early on, and I think it was a good one. Mm -hmm. I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you find you want to find a, a social work BFF? 
Yeah. Like, so I take like, this like, a lot. Yeah. The Thunder Bay District Health Unit puts on a lot of like learning seminars in my area that I've been able to go to. A lot of them are like they're free and like use mental health and different kind of stuff. Like I kind of try to jump on any local opportunities I can to to further my education in that area. And do you part? You must partner, I imagine. Yeah, um, I partner with the Sioux Hudson Literacy quite a bit, and they just got me a die cutter. <laughs> I, think I told you about they had a Craig, so I got like a Cricut, which is pretty cool, and they got us a little three D printer. So he's on the library board too. It's very beneficial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. Like big part of the, I think the proposal when they were writing for this grant was that part of part of what we were doing in the communities was like. Um, increasing civic engagement through the arts. So those partnerships that we make with different community organizations um, and then like housing with teens kind of funnel in and do media work through those organizations usually looks really good to the city. Hopefully that can us around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Halliburton College started out with a, a maker space. Mm -hmm. And so there's a die cutter, there's an industrial sewing machine, there's a 3D printer. There's just a bunch of stuff there. And now, <coughs> that spread out to our library. So we live in a municipal where we have four municipalities, and so there's four libraries. So the makerspace now has spread out to those library spaces, and so people are going in there. I had kids the other day that were doing the, the circuits. We were we were putting electrodes into carrots and playing the piano. Yeah. 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 Whatever. Yeah. 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 It's really a lot of fun. And we were there till closing. And uh, so now the very next step is the media lab. It's, it's I can it's just all sort of slowly starting to come in, and uh, and, and now we're you know people are starting to run out of space. <laughs> so we've got adults going to the Halbert School of the Arts to that building and booking space in the maker space, and we've got all kinds of kids um, and teens and go and, and my husband doing the circuit thing, playing the piano with her, yeah. and um, going to the library. It's just amazing. And people are going, I had no idea. Like, how many people know what a die cut is? And how many people know, you know, like, really, yeah. <laughs> kinds of things? Yeah. And then we have a fashion show. We have a, I'm with the Arts Council, how it's held their hands. And so we have a, um, we have an, um, a creative arts fashion show. And so several of our artists use the pieces from the makerspace to create their works for that. So just, trying to tie it all together. And then with the Media Lab this year, Steve knows Tammy Ray, who is a force in media yes. arts in our community, and this thing is just gonna, it, yeah, I would too. <laughs> and she's coming uh, tomorrow, so um, it's just gonna take this to a height that we had no idea. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, so, we talk a little bit about the workshops that we've done now. So it was like, it's kind of awesome, kind of scary. We're allowed to do like whatever workshop you wanted to when we first got there. Um, so you just, we just like, well the way I went about it is just like throw like a bunch of different types of workshops out and see what sort of sticks, I guess. Um, at first we were doing like stop motion animation. Uh, that was really big with like teens under like 13, especially when it was kind of a gray area, like who were we letting into the spaces. And then somewhere along, when, somewhere along the lines, Trillium really, uh, kind of put a foot down and said no, it has to be 14 to 19. So. We kind of, I kind of changed up like the actual workshops that we did. We did like a lot of photography workshops. Uh, as you can see, sometimes we went outside. Um, I did some research trying to see like what ones we could do indoors. So we did like light painting. Um, we did like splash photography. So we have like water drops. We drop strawberries and try to capture it. Um, we also have a green screen, which is really nice. Everybody gets really So I, um, since I've never actually, this is my first summer with Digital Creator, all of my workshops and programming have been indoors at all this point. And it's been um, pretty experimental up until this point. So like I said, I came from a film background, but I also knew moving there that like, I wasn't gonna be able to just, you know, crutch on that and just be like, hey, film Fridays every week and then drop <laughs> in the rest of the time. Um, so really trying to experiment with as much 
as we possibly can. So like something going on here is like branching out into Adobe Illustrator to do digital mandalas, which is like, I don't know if nobody's done graphic design before, but as an adult, not knowing anything to do with graphic design is pretty, pretty like intimidating to have to teach it. It's a different thing to have to do it for this first time, but to have to teach it, which again, as the, the newest person here, was so great to have like a, a support team of like, because I think that everybody here is pretty spectacular with graphic design in my opinion, so that was awesome to have that to fall back on onto, onto base camp. Um, and then, I mean, I'm also kind of selfish, so I'm not not going to do film stuff, so there's like, there's like the clapper board, which is great. And I also, too, am aware that as much as mining is a potential uh, career option, so is like the film industry, and it's attractive to a lot of people, you know? And I, I don't try to like, push people and stuff, but I like to give people the lingo, and so if it ever does happen for them someday, they'll have a leg up, you know? Um, yeah, so doing, doing film, so that was from our March Break movie week. This was from Stop Motion. When I moved to Timmins, I brought along like all these, um, to use the word for my mother, like bonums or little trinkets or whatever. Um, so one of our first animations was, um, that is Zoe there, um, animating the Iron Giant from that awesome movie, right? Um, and then we also did light painting, so that was me in the middle of February with, you know, four teenagers with cameras and lights and stuff pointed at me, trying to make magic happen. Yeah, yeah. So it's been, uh, it's been a blast in Timmins, and it's been, it's been kind of cool in a way to be, you know, to join the party while it was well underway. Um, because like I said, I knew Steve pretty well, and I mean, you guys are all pretty approachable, so seeing what has kind of worked in other spaces, <coughs> what's worked in other communities, what are favorites and preferable to other communities and stuff. Yeah. Sorry, I talk kind of fast. If anybody has any questions. <laughs> um, I just want to build on something you just mentioned about like giving them those skills. I think part of why we why we are where we are in the north and kind of pan northern um, is because like there's a bit of a lack in terms of access to some of this digital media tech, especially for young people. I don't know if that like there's lots of young people here. Can you? statement um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so we're sort of trying to bridge that gap and so um, yeah giving them like photo skills or um, just like a little bit of a foundation so that you know they have as much of a shot at maybe a career in uh, digital arts or technology um, the same the same as other teens in like southern Ontario uh, places or that's that's part of our goal yeah, and I, in my space, uh, lots of the teams are into photography, we're like, on the boardwalk, like all of that stuff is right, like, right beside where I am. I'm right beside the left, or the art gallery. Um, so lots of photography, and like I said, lots of filmmaking that happens. Um, luckily, I have an experimental background, so I can really encourage them to try a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, there's lots to take pictures of in Northern Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think one of the really cool things about a pilot project is just being able to experiment so much with your programming. And I found that my digital photography workshops were the most popular, so I started a weekly photography night. And um, it's gone over really well. Uh, they're starting to kind of move into filmmaking now, which is not my bag, but I have <laughs> great people to lean on. Uh, we have an overhead projector in the media room because we screen movies on the weekends. So, um, yeah, the kids would put just kind of crazy things on the overhead projector and then take photos and uh, but we are doing some graphic design. Um, libraries are full of old tech. And taking apart old tech is super fun. And that's been something that's uh, gone over well in my space, just like taking everything apart, seeing where like the power is. If you can like put a battery on it, will like the light turn on? And it's, uh, yeah, very experimental. But I'm starting to do more of like days of the week dedicated to certain activities rather than like uh, a workshop on a, like a couple of days. A month, yeah. How many hours a week does the program run? So um, after school, I think we're all kind of 
we keep it it's all different or, in yeah, each space but i do um monday to friday after school three to like seven or eight depending on what's going on in the year room like we share it with the library so if someone has a room booked or if there's like a film screening um we gotta <laughs> we gotta pack out but uh um I also have my own entrance, which is really good, so the librarian will let me stay, or let us stay after hours sometimes, too. Should we show some... Uh, oh, yeah, so yeah, Jordan, for sure. my... Uh, he was going to come, too. It's my star. He was going to come um, each side. Yeah. So he did this in the media room with the projector and with our cameras. It's an experimental like video.
that's what goes on in our space. That's kind of what it is. That's <laughs> all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so now they're working on uh, Jordan has made, he's writing like a little, or it's not little, it's huge. He's writing a script for this like kind of horror film that he has in his mind. And it's, yeah, it's pretty cool to see. So it's, it's, that's what goes on at Simple Camp. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm, I'm pretty like wide range in terms of like huge wide range of programming. Partially because like my, my teams are my they, I don't know what it is, but they're like really hard to like get to. Um, and so trying different things has been the best way to do it. And also uh, using video games as like a reward for just trying and programming for different <laughs> things, right? Uh, yeah, so I do a lot of different things. These two, uh, these three images are from this visit I had from a group of seven and eighth graders and they had half an hour to try like four different stations. They did photography, they did coding, they did video games for school, and only one of them complained. <laughs> and, they, and they did storyboarding, so I just like, I was just like tackling something that the teacher asked me, like, hey, um, they have a lot of technology in their lives, but like, I don't know that anyone's still teaching them how to use it. And I was like, okay, we can do that, but I did it in a super like, casual, creative way. So, that was a, a lot of fun. Um, I mentioned my Dungeons and Dragons. It is like my most well attended day. Kitchen mm -hmm. is kids. And it's creative, collaborative storytelling. And they learn to problem solve and they learn how to like speak to each other and they learn how to like slay dragons. And you know, it's just like all of the skills you'll need for high school and past. Um, and then I did like a little bit of like a, a land art thing where they. They want to like build things, for the which is really awesome. So I do as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. I like how you often have rewards too. Yeah. Yeah. Rewards. Yeah. I do rewards. All right. Uh, I guess we'll start with saying this really demonstrates the two main types of people I have in my space: those who come in not knowing what they want to do at all; they have no idea and those who come in and really want to focus on something. So Cheyenne animates every single time she comes in and just, she gets in, she barely says hi to me, and she just tells she animates for four hours straight. And so that's a liger. She asks me, what should I draw? I said, one of the liger, why not? I'm pretty good, I don't know, actually know what the liger will play, but it's close to me. Um, yeah, we try and get outside too, you know, it's a beautiful area of Canadian Shields, so try and get outside whenever you can, just for little photo hikes, editing them afterwards. Um, we also do a lot of light painting, because that's super fun, why wouldn't you? Uh, and some of the other stuff here um, I've done at the attendance center. So for whatever reasons, a lot of these teams just didn't quite fit in the normal structure of, of the high school system they had in place there. So uh, I was encouraged to go in and, and work with them. And uh, they really, I love this picture of the Dudley Scotia there. So they did a great job, really took on that one. And just talking again about our, our collaborative team efforts here, I actually didn't do this workshop. This was one that Lane posted on Facebook or video or something. Yeah, vector art. Yeah, so yeah. it was easy. Watch, watch Lane present something on the computer and then we'll do it all together. So <laughs> yeah. I made a little headshot and the team made the dog. Um, like a 3D printer, you know, we just try to do a little bit of everything. We've done game design. Try and mix it up and see what they like most and then continue doing that. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to do, <coughs> it's 3 o'clock, so we have half hour, and then we want to do a bit of a Q&A, too, at the end. So maybe, um, Q's right now. Yeah. 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 yeah, anyone has any questions, do questions. Otherwise, we are planning this, uh, we split up into groups, we're planning on like bringing up just some like teen scenarios that have happened at our spaces, so we were, we're just like kind of tricky situations, we weren't like, totally sure how to handle them. And we just sort of have a discussion to you guys how you would handle it and see how we can handle it. Do you think we could do that as a group, Steve? I just like, I feel like we got a good thing going. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
a communication platform for nonprofits. Okay. I think so for for profit too. Okay. Nonprofits get a discount. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a month. Yeah. So there's like messaging. There's a messaging portion. There's a, like you can deposit documents for sharing. Uh, so we have like a Dropbox for like timesheets on there too. There's like a place for like our data forms, like our evaluation forms. And then there's, it's called the campfire. And <laughs> the campfire, we all chat around. It's just like a message. Yeah, yeah. 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 We put up like program outlines if we've developed like a program in our workshops mm -hmm. and other people yeah. want to use it. You can put up a PDF and other people can use your workshops. Yeah. And there's one, so we all have kind of two different sections that we can participate on. There's one for Digital Creator North that we all are on, and then we have one that's site site specific that we communicate with Holly and with our data uh, person. It's a bit like what Sparks kind of kind of okay. with their forms and groups and sharing all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a little more structured. Yeah. But it's like an off the shelf commercial program. Pardon me? Kind of off the self commercial yeah. 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 The, the kids are, the teams that you work with are not connected. No, they don't no, use Facebook. Yeah. They, don't they uh, yeah. That's just something that we use internally. That is something we've spoken about in the past, is, is kind of collaboration with teams by proxy, you know, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. to date has by other organizations that we looked to. We spent like hundreds of thousands of dollars to develop these platforms. And then they realized that the teams are just using social media. Like they're just yeah. gonna use WhatsApp or they're just gonna use Facebook or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's like, just let them do that and then maybe try to involve you know, the spaces in those yeah. existing platforms that they're already on. And now, yeah, they're all, they'll all use different platforms. I think it depends on what your youth yeah. uses is yeah. the social media you use. Um, my youth use Facebook, and that's like used in the in like the far north. It's it's all Facebook. That's really interesting, yeah. Lane, too, because um, a challenge that I mean, it, it was a challenge. It continues to sort of be a challenge, but it's not as big as it used to be. Um, something that I've run into is like how do teens hear about our workshops? It's like yeah, you can print out a stack and put it at the library, but they're already there. So they're almost always going to hear about your workshops on social media, through the Facebook page or the Instagram page. Uh, and I actually found that I couldn't, I couldn't favor one or the other because it's almost right down the middle. I've got some teens who have Facebook and don't have Instagram, or some teens who have Instagram and don't have Facebook. Um, so it makes me, I have to be a little bit deliberate with my marketing. Like if I'm going to make a video, it's probably best that it's like a minute long, fits within that time frame of Instagram and vice versa. I know a lot of teenagers use Snapchat. Yeah. Um, however, Snapchat, i found, isn't great for outreach, um, simply because they need to be following you, first of all. There's not the same uh, kind of hashtag system that you might have on Instagram. If they are following you, it's great to give them the information, but to initially kind of rope them in, uh, you, you need to find an alternate way. I leave Snapchat on, my, on the iPad in the space, and then I just leave it out. Mm -hmm. And then they just add their friends and Snapchat their friends from the space, which, yeah. It hasn't been a problem so far. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, where does the tech come from that you use at your spaces? Like, do you have a set budget that you can order tech like through Amazon or something? Or do you go pick it up from somewhere? Yeah, there was, that's part of the seed or yeah. the program. Yeah, so yeah. it was all built into the trillion grant um, with the capital funding. So each space got about equivalent to two Five to thirty thousand dollars equipment, um, and then we're hoping to top it off in the future. Um, we've kind of hit our limit now, um, especially since we realized we need food much more than we thought. Uh, <laughs> food was such a big deal, so we kind of had to like filter some of that money into my pizza and chips mm -hmm. and <laughs> right. popcorn. And tea. Yeah. I think some of us also have just equipment out the library owned beforehand, so the 3D printer in my space, uh, that's the libraries. Uh, but all, yeah, all the camera here and all, all the other good stuff is part of the ground. I think most of us try to supplement that. Like Steve was saying, um, he has a Nintendo 64, which is awesome. For me, what, what really like helps enhance stuff is like that slate, that little clapper board. It's such a, a small thing, but it like, it, um, 
legitimizes their projects, right? And that's like no big deal for me to just bring my sleep to the space. Uh, got a monopod as well. Something I started doing, which is like, I try to instill the object with like, this is really important, is I started bringing my ukulele to the space. I brought my ukulele to And space that's too. a huge one, what especially, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They love it though. Yeah, ukulele. it's big. My space yeah. really likes the ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing we've learned, guys, across the board, then you yeah, everyone needs to be Yeah, definitely just small things like that. I bring my microphones in to do sound production workshops. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, anything that I own that I'm happy to share. Why not? So. But it's not always sunshine and lollipops. We have some real, yeah, serious situation scenarios <laughs> that come up in the space. Are we all gonna? We all prepared one, but given the size, we could probably. Yeah. So I guess I'll start. I'll start it off. A situation that I thought would be interesting to discuss that I have happened on my space was like a team that wanted to make a really heavy video. You know, like a video, like someone that wants to like, commit suicide. And you know, he's like pitching me the idea, like, oh, we'll do a storyboard. And you're just kind of sitting there thinking, like, I don't know, like, how we can do this or not. Um, so I guess that would be like my first scenario, how you guys think, like if that situation arose, what the best way to sort of handle that situation? I had that same situation in my space too. Yeah. Um, like you have youth come into your space that have like trauma in their background and they want to express themselves in a certain way. Yeah. But uh, yeah, figuring out where the lines are there was hard for me to think about. Yeah, so I guess the question is, guys, with trickier, heavier situations like that, you know, since we're, we lived these experiences and we were there, um, what would you guys do if you were in those shoes? Tell us what should we do. Yeah, what should yeah. we have done? Yeah. Open forum. Yeah. There's no right or wrong answer either, of yeah. course. My <laughs> Shondell? Don't advise method acting. Don't yeah, yeah. Yes. don't advise yes. method acting. Yes. Can you explain at least? But don't, uh, don't try and act it out in a real life style. Yes. Uh, yeah. Try and try and find ways around it. Metaphors, maybe different mediums, like try animation if you really feel forced to tackle this topic. Yeah. Let's use it with Plato. <laughs> try to try to by different ways to represent it, perhaps, rather than having uh, to to tackle those feelings and tackle those ideas, rather than full full. Let's go for realism. Yes. 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 And even almost subverting that and injecting almost like humor in some way as like a counterpoint, while like acknowledging and highlighting these issues, but having something to kind of communicate in a different style, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like playing on video like play over for example. Yeah. How would you explain that to a team though? That'd be very difficult. I, I think a good way to do that would just be to do a little research and find like an artist you can show them who is dealing with that and working in those ways in a way that you think will be beneficial for the team. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You could also so show uh, different examples of how uh, performers previously in film or other mediums yeah. have used yeah. Yeah, the right. dark uh, content, but exactly. flaring it up, showing the shades of it that exactly. also celebrates light, which uh, if they say, no, 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 I want it to be very, very dark and focused, you can right. say, well, it balances off more nicely there. Yeah, and to the team, it might feel like a really new thing that they're like, working on this new project, but there is like history and other artists and filmmakers that have worked and deal and dealt with these issues. Yeah. There is like some framework that you can guide them. You know, so. That's amazing, yeah. I wish I had you guys. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, those, that, see that, that's uh, really great. Like I will carry that too. Like I'll be able to use that in future situations also. The way that I went about handling that situation is I just wanted to, I just asked some questions like, I didn't like, put them on the spot or anything. We did one shoot one scene. We didn't get to the full on news or anything. I just kind of sat them down. I said, like, why do you want to make this? And, like, is there a specific reason why I want to make this? 
and just like asking them and just sort of putting a bit of a light on them, just sort of, I guess, woke them up in a way and they just kind of dropped the project out. Sometimes all they need is to talk to someone, right? So if they want to make this movie and that's how they think that they need to express themselves, just being able to talk through what they're going through was probably more beneficial than making the movie yeah. on the long term. Right. I mean, like maybe their motivation isn't even to make a movie, it's no, to put the feelers no, out to start communication. Yeah, and it is like communication. Yeah. And if there's things to be dealt with still and to be worked through, then your space is a creative space. So this is a creative, a generative space. Let's take the, that energy and make it into something. We make it into yeah. yeah, that's why it was so hard too. I was talking to my site supervisor who was in didn't also want to handle the situation. I was like, well, that's why this stuff's so great, you know, because like, you have these emotions, you want to express it somehow. I just feel really conflicted about my the situation. Yeah, I think going forward, something like that were to happen, and a good way to say is, let's do this maybe, like, show them other artists that are going to feel it, and then they can connect with those artists also. It's almost like slowing it down a bit, so that you have time to think, yeah. and you have time to yeah. talk to somebody else. Yeah. You know, graphic novels, or, you know, like, like that's storyboarded or let's you know let's mm -hmm. do some steps first. Mm -hmm. Like giving you guys some time to figure it out. Yeah. Talk to somebody. Yeah. 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 yeah, But just to slow it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of like call help lines that you can connect them with, like some cyber mention yes. hotlines, mm -hmm. like 24 hour uh, access. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's something that we did all like you know after a year of this, these situations coming up. That's something that we decided on, or Peterson decided on, or probably in conjunction with you, but that we needed um, to have resources available for the youth there. Because it was really clear that a lot of the youth that are using the space have some trauma that they're working through, and like, having those resources available. Yeah, was really important just to have our just have that support for ourselves because that's not our home. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say it too, like Northern Ontario, that is like a huge thing is mental health issues. Like um, I remember when I first went to school in North Bay, I thought it was so crazy that we got an extra reading week. It was just so normalized. It was like, oh yeah, it's because of the suicide rates here. So mm -hmm. it's such a real thing to consider. Yeah. I will bring my situation up, which was maybe like, yeah, it was a little bit and not quite as like smacked you in the face to handle, but um, so I had a teen who come into the space regularly and um, it like over time it became pretty apparent that the teen didn't have the greatest home situation um, and you know, it was obvious that this was a great resource for him and he was really into it, really into making movies, really talented. Um, and coming all the time, um, and we had a lot of guys coming in and you know doing different kinds of outreach, kind of trying to diversify my space. We started getting a lot more teenage girls in, um, and I had an issue first that the teen uh, commented on another teen's photo. They connected through our Instagram, and I guess the comment was about her appearance, and it made her uncomfortable, understandably. Um, and so. That was like the first thing, the first like flag, and then um, a few weeks later, uh, like there were teens in the space kind of working together. It was like perfect participatory cultural model, like when you looked around. Um, and then like I turned around and I turned back, and there's a girl crying right in front of me. And I guess one of the teens who had, he had left at that point, but he had asked, he was 14, and he asked this 12 year old teen out um, to be his girlfriend, and that was a really like that was really traumatic for her, so it was like clear that I needed to like talk to this teen about like, his behavior in this space. So, um, and then uh, the same another thing happened, I guess, just before that, where I had a, a really cool young artist in for a workshop, and the teen actually like found that artist Instagram through our Instagram and, and was talking to them and commenting on their appearance and things like that. So it was, it was tricky. It was a sensitive subject that I had to talk. This teenage boy about. So, does anyone have any <laughs> thoughts on how they might approach that? Kind of the ground rule, sorry. Kind of the ground rule <coughs> of your space. This is a, I'm sure you've all done that, talk about it. It's your safe, this is a safe space, non judgmental. But then kids, oh, well, you know, then you have, then 
maybe you've done that, but this happens, but then you have this, you know, sort of have a way to stay in mm -hmm. You probably do that anyway. You're right, though. Like, yeah. establishing a code of conduct was important at the beginning, but then after this incident, it was clear that that needed to be way more visible in my space, <laughs> and maybe a little more, uh, like, specific. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'd say just the first step would be a private discussion with the team and just getting it out of the open and acknowledged that, that there were consequences to these actions that we may not have like, thought about or even realized at this point. And just so I'd say the first step is just awareness. And then if it occurred to them, we can get up further. I think you're right. I think that benefit of the doubt is a great cushion to be like, I understand that you what the consequences were probably nowhere close to the intention, um, but let's just talk about what those consequences were in case you didn't know. You know, because you're right. You're right. Like probably did. As a, I was thinking too, in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, probably doesn't have a awareness of the impact of, mm -hmm. of what he's doing, mm -hmm. and so what a gift to be able to help them think about that and it might take more than one conversation. <laughs> Does anyone else have any thoughts about that scenario? You guys made me feel really good about you and feel really good about it because that's sort of, yeah, that's what I did. I just pulled them aside. And luckily this was my regular, like this is a gene I saw all the time who gets to be like really familiar and so it was like a lot easier to approach the conversation with him and just kind of you know, ask him how, like, let, let him know how it made other people feel, let him know that the boundaries in the space and that, like, that kind of behavior wasn't acceptable, but, yeah, also, like, just, like, maybe he didn't realize that he was making other people uncomfortable, so, yeah. And the foundation for it is probably, I can imagine, just from the way you're talking now, he would feel, you know, you like him. Right? Like you care about him, as a, you care about him enough to have this conversation. You're not, you know, I don't want you to come because you did this, right? And so you're seeing the value of him being there and him participating too. So it's just, you know, this is an experience in life and there's more to it than that too. You're great, right, yeah, framing it that way, being like, I want you here, you want to be here. The one I prepared is like particularly heavy, and I'm not sure if I'm ready for it at this particular moment. Oh, I can go. Yeah. Um, so I inherited a bit of programming when I walked into my space. Our children's librarian at the time ran a video game club Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Tuesdays was for grade seven to twelve. Thursdays was grade three to six, and it was very popular. Um, but I like to refer to it as Lord of the Flies. That is a lot of what it felt like. There was, like he would make them pop, they were just like popcorn all over the floor, and they would say terrible, terrible things. I'm like, what, what is this world? And then there was no division, it seemed like in the age groups, like the older kids would come to the younger kids, and I see younger kids would come to the, it was like a free for all. I'm just wondering if you weren't prepared to share it, like are we prepared? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, we could yeah. on what's coming as a group. I can, I can offer you specific trigger warnings. I feel like I'm ready to actually. Yeah, I can't think as a group. Yeah, yeah. I would sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ye
what was your strategy once you took on board of the class? I, I took the popcorn away. <laughs> <laughs> no more popcorn. And there was like, they also, uh, there was a bit of like entitlement. Well, no, there was a lot of entitlement there. And uh, the children's librarian was just happy that people were, that the kids were coming to the space. Just like kind of looking for just like a large quantity of people, but it was too much. Um, yeah, so I took the popcorn away. Woo. Um, and I never felt bad about it. They're like, you know, but we needed, yeah, we needed to like start from scratch. And then I became a lot more firm on the age groups. And I lost a lot of participants, but I lost the rowdy ones. Um, and uh, then I got a lot better, and then I started to slowly reintroduce the popcorn again. <laughs> a more controlled environment. Um, and then still now, like it has gotten a lot better, but there's still issues every now and then, and a lot of it is like entitlement. And I love that they feel an ownership of the space, but then it just got too much. And uh, I did a workshop in the community about addictions. And uh, the presenter was explaining addictions and like your brain, like there are all these pathways in your brain and the road, like roads, and the roads you use more often um, become wider and uh, the other roads kind of grow over and uh, the ones that you travel more to these like reward centers, it's like putting pavement down on them and they're like super like established and that's the only road that you travel is like back and forth. And then the kids started playing Fortnite in the space and uh, they would just play for hours. And this one kid uh, came in around 1.30, probably when he should have been in school. Um, and it was five o'clock and I asked him to move computers and he was just like, completely ignored me. Um, so I shut the space down early that day. And then I had to put a two I put a two hour time limit on device usage. Um, which is super still really lenient. Like if you were in the main area of the li of our library you get guaranteed one hour and then a, like a circulation clerk or a librarian could ask you to move. Um, so I still gave them two hours, which is a lot of time with Fortnite. Um, but yeah I just like putting down like boundaries. There was no structure to those uh, video game nights and now there is a lot more structure and kind of building it back up again. But yeah, I lost a lot of kids. For a while, it'd be like two coming to the one night from like a room full of people and now I'm kind of back up to around averaging like 10-ish every night. So, and, then, and now it's like you can be in the room and uh, not uh, what's that? There are no flies. No flies. <laughs> but yeah, there was like a mob mentality. Yes, yeah. yeah. The teacher in me says congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. It's like my grounding achievement. <laughs> and I'm sure the janitor is like happy about it too. I feel so bad. Mm -hmm. Everybody has everybody has boundaries. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. rules and rights to live yes. in doesn't matter. Yes. And you do it with kindness and fairness, then mm -hmm. it comes out in you. And they all got it when I was like, you know what, there's no more thoughts. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. My mom never loved me. Cool. Uh, so it's my understanding we have some teachers in the audience today, right? Do we have any um, do we have any like technicians of any kind? Okay, any any practical artists where you deal with like a lot of machinery or equipment? Like that? Okay, cool. Per oh, great. Awesome. <laughs> More or less. Okay, cool. Um, so what we all kind of do can get pretty technical on the equipment side of things sometimes. I mean, lightweight considering, but you have things like, you know, three light stands um, and then, you know, tripod with the, all its like, I remember not very long ago was it confusing for me to figure out which knob does what on a tripod. So, and then, and then the cameras as well, which like all mount in particular ways. So I guess my curiosity, because I, I know how, you know, I'm working through it, but my curiosity is how, how do you, or how, how would anybody who wants to speak to this, um, instruct young people, and my participants so far have been closer to 14 than to 19, so still quite young, 
how do you instruct young people um, to have instill this stuff that has to last with respect so it doesn't get broken and out of commission? How do you instill that respect into them while still maintaining like a lightweight drop-in style fun atmosphere? I go back to the boundaries thing. Within within <laughs> boundaries, there's safety, right? So if you mm. if you are clear and kind with your boundaries, then people can. And it's about respect for each other, respect for equipment, respect for environment. So having having those kinds of conversations about the stuff, because they would appreciate value of things. They mm -hmm. probably have a phone and. People take better care of their phone than themselves, but right. you know that kind of conversation. Yeah. They ask you all the time how much stuff costs. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> how much is, yeah. yeah. Or they want to know like the technical technical specs of the computer. They're like, what do you like? Like, what yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just don't use Photoshop. Yes. Oh, yeah. Exactly where you just went there. I was gonna say put a, a, a sticker on each item with replacement cost. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Nice. I think we've had, had a bit of that in us. That hasn't happened. I, I had a lens crop uh, issue that a kid just dropped a camera and the lens, the like, body went one way and the lens went that way and I saw these little plastic bits go on and I was like, it's not good. So I picked them all up off the floor and tried to like super glue them. Um, but that was a repair. That was my first and only repair. And that was a year, it was like exactly, I think it was like the one year anniversary of me starting my job. <laughs> so, you know, the whole year, and that was the only damage. Yeah. Am I allowed to? Oh yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm thinking, going back to code of conduct, maybe the, the taking care of the space and the equipment as, as everyone's responsibility Mm -hmm. part of that code, um, yeah, or added. Great, cool, I love that, yes? I also find, okay, coming from a theater background, when I would do plays where there's like a lot of props, mm -hmm. there'd be a props table in the back, and it's like very clearly delineated, it would be like taped out, it would be marked as like where mm -hmm. everything goes. So distilling that down into like having a really clear and simplified system, so that it's super easy for anybody to be like, oh yeah, this is by the nature of that system that's really user friendly. That is great. I love that. Uh, it keeps the space cleaner and everybody just knows what to do. Mm -hmm. Great. Very cool. Awesome. Do you manage things too around, you know, someone's coming new to the space, you're new to the space, this is so and so, they've been using that equipment for a long time, they can walk you through the mm -hmm. care and yeah. Of um, Jordan, my mm -hmm. filmmaker, he has been like he has brought in a lot of kids to this or a lot of his friends to the space, and I step back for the photography club now. And him and his friend Kiara, they they're kind of little leaders, um, but they train a lot of their friends. Train they show all their friends how to use the cameras and like this is how you change like the light, it's like the exposure. And so I find like I have kids that come that are natural leaders. And they kind of just take that on pretty naturally, showing their friends how to use the technology. That's one, yeah. Yeah, no, same, similar thing in Timmins as well. I won't take up too much more time. But um, yeah, yeah, it's it's really cool how that happens. Where if you do a few good workshops, or you have a team who's coming out and just like on their own can like build a stop motion rig with great lighting and everything's locked in and everything's super safe. It's really cool how if you are engaged and somebody is like, hey, I can't get the tripod leg, what is going on? Um, how these problems solve themselves because if you've done it well, if you've shown somebody well, then they can show other people. Mm -hmm. well, that's very cool. That's like the spirit of the, the, spirit yeah. of the program, right? <laughs> yeah. Knowledge sharing. Slideshow is over. I think our time is up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're off the hook with this. Yeah. 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 Does anyone have any other questions like, for us? Uh, you don't really present the same in uh, I'm from Minto, which is southern Ontario, north of Waterloo as well. So we've got a few things. We have a youth action council, basically your age group. And they do well, mostly happier things, too, like that. But we have a, a business incubator, and there's empty space in town, so we gave them almost half of it. Just, 
here, you can redecorate it so that's the same space in that too. And then on the heavier is we talk about suicide. In rural Wellington, four months, we have 21 suicides. Not just like young to old, and uh, there was a particularly really bad one with a young person. And the Youth Action Council you came to one of our volunteers and up to our mayor and says, what can we do? You know? So I mean, we're going to try and have workshops and stuff like that. And, and if we're trying to raise some money that we had from a separate project, we're going to donate it to Mental Health because there's huge gaps in southern Ontario. And yeah. no explanation. Nothing terrible happened in the last few months. But all of a sudden, we had this huge spike in suicides. And like a real yeah. Yeah. Well, it was yeah. mm -hmm. It doesn't matter the newspapers and the I think I think a big part of it is just removing the taboo of, about talking about your feelings and, and just open discourse. It's the healthiest thing. Right? Mm -hmm. There's no direct solution. It's mm -hmm. just slowly just need to get more comfortable with relating to one another. Talk to yeah. someone. Yeah. Because a lot of my kids, they talk to me, and they're very, like, blunt. They're like, yeah, I'm, like, super depressed. And I'm like, I feel bad. Like, yeah, I've been there, too. And hearing that from from me, like, going, like, to an adult and being like, man, I'm having a really low day. And hearing, like, yeah, I've been there, like, give me a second. And instead of, like, I don't really have to deal with this. Or, like... You know, I'm like flipping through the HR textbook to like respond to them, right? I'm just like responding with empathy, and I think that's the best way that I've found to handle it. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, hi. <laughs> I wish. We are now. <laughs> kids really want to come um, and I think right now it's just like time there was just like one of us in each of the spaces and if we had you know a little more under yeah if we had more time and more other things we would definitely open it up mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of battles on the ground that need to help you make that happen yeah. <laughs> come together so um, I it is 3.30 and we need to go back, so I'm going to officially say thank you very much. This thank you. Great. Wow.